Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. We have apparently hit on a hot topic because we have a unusual number of participants. Today we are going to discuss the basics, the 101 of organic LED technology. The reason that we have brought this up early in 2013 as our first topic of the year is the great number of interest in LEDs in general and growing number of distributors and other lighting professionals frankly paying attention to the technology. More and more are reading and hearing about organic light emitting diodes known as OLEDs and asking more and more questions about this technology in general lighting applications. So with that being said we'll we'll get started and we'll work our way to OLED in general lighting. Before we get started let's define what it is we're talking about. We are talking about an LED LED that is structured with organic materials. An OLED is any light emitting diode, any light emitting diode where emissive layer, electroluminescent layer is composed of film made of organic compounds. It works very similar to regular LEDs or known as white light high power LEDs as far as the structure is concerned. We have an electrical current from the cathode that flows through to the anode like any other LED, but going through organic layers gives the electrons to the emissive layer and removes electrons from the conductive layer. What this does is by removing electrons from the conductive layer leaves holes. These holes need to be filled and they are filled with electrons from the emissive layer. The holes jump to the emissive layer and recombine with the electrons, in other words the substrate. As the electrons drop into the holes they release their extra energy in the form of light and light photons are produced. A little bit of the history of OLEDs first developed in the early 1950s as theoretical out of Europe Early technology would emit a short burst of light when voltage was applied to layers of materials. This early form applied a high voltage alternating circuit, AC power, field, and this field was made out of available substrates at the time. In the 60s, they were able to go over to AC and using additional substrates and materials. By 1987, they were getting light emitting diodes with organic layers for the first time. That was not that long ago considering how deep organic LEDs are in our everyday day-to-day -day business today. In the organic layer we have a conducting layer. This layer is made of organic plastic molecules that transport holes from the anode as we mentioned earlier. One conducting polymer used often in OLEDs is a polyiline. The emissive layer, this layer is made of organic plastic molecules different from the conducting layer. These transport the electrons from the cathode. This is where the light is made, where the photons are emitted from. The cathode may or may not be transparent depending on the type of OLED that we're looking to achieve. And we'll discuss more about transparent substrates a little later. But if you take a look at the drawing that we have on the side, you can see the individual layers and, and how they're staggered. And all of this comes out to maybe the thickness about two hundredth of a human hair. That's how thin these materials are. Now there are two distinct types of organic LEDs. There's the passive matrix and there's the active matrix, also known as AMOLEDs. The passive matrix OLEDs, the organic layer, is between strips of cathode and anode that run perpendicular to each other, as you can see in the graphic below. The intersections form the pixels. Every intersection is an individual pixel. They're easy to make. They use a little more power than the AMO LEDs, but they're best for small screens. The active matrix OLEDs, also known as AMO LEDs, this is my first organic LED product. I own a Galaxy S3, and if you haven't seen one of those yet, you just have to take a look at the beautiful screen that this device produces, and that is due to the active matrix or the AMO LED. Now here we have full layers of cathode and anode. The anode layer is a thin strip of transistor, requires much less power than the passive matrix type, and it has a much higher refresh rate. For those of you who are familiar with refresh rate, the more action or motion on your screen, the faster you want your refresh rate to be. Most LED TVs have high rates of refresh. You want to look at least 60 hertz is what you'll find, but 120 is where it looks best, 120 or better. And obviously active matrix are where you're going to find OLEDs on larger screens, and certainly that would probably be best 
and probably will evolve to your general lighting with the active type. Now right now today you do find some organic LED products that are outside of small displays. We have large screen televisions, obviously the cell phone screens, I just mentioned my Galaxy S3. You're going to have deeper, richer blacks. You're going to have more vibrant colors on your computer screens, portable devices, and already we're finding some very high-end architectural light fixtures as you see here on the right. Now we're all here because we're lighting professionals and Galaxy S3s and other handheld devices are interesting things, but we want to talk about the general light applications. Today you can actually find some high-end architectural organic LED light fixtures. There's a series that is growing that you see in the top left. If you just Google organic LED light fixtures, you will find these and many, many more. This top line here you see is expanding into more and more colors. I've been tracking these products. This bottom left one here, this is actually color changing as well as a beautiful pure white light. And the color changing is done in such a way where it actually looks like a wave of light as it passes through. It almost looks like it's in motion and maybe one of the most beautiful light fixtures I had ever seen. So we will be able to do things with organic LED light fixtures that we had not seen before, including things with color, CRI, and the like. Advantages today of OLED lighting versus the older incandescent and fluorescent technologies. OLED lighting is a cheaper way to make flexible lighting. Where that's required today, OLED is already the most efficient way to go. It requires less power than traditional incandescents and some of the earlier fluorescents that are out there. And that's referring to efficacy. When we look at total power, it's much less. As the efficacy grows is how OLED is going to take the place of traditional light sources. It's a better quality of light. It's inherently high CRI or high color rendering. The quality of this light is better than where fluorescent started and is better than where fluorescent is today. And new design concepts for interior lighting using this flat, thin, flexible material is just absolutely inevitable. A flexible bending light. Think of the applications. You can have lampshades that are actually the light source itself. Virtually any surface can have a light screen on it. Think of furniture that illuminates. Think of walls and ceilings that illuminate. In commercial places, you can have just sections of the wall or ceiling around your work area illuminate combined with controls it can be very efficient and we're looking at task lighting that is less intrusive than any type of light source we've ever had before imagine a wallpaper as a light source imagine your walls and ceilings are the light fixtures all of this is achievable and actually being done at high levels today as the efficacy and efficiency of these products go up as the costs come down these things that we're talking about are absolutely a reality. FYI, this wallpaper design you see on the bottom left, my wife saw this as I was putting this presentation together, and she wants it and she wants it now. But now is still a little bit uh, outside of our budget, so we'll have to wait for those costs to come down a little bit. Now we talked about walls and ceilings, but we can foresee a time where a new construction for housing, new construction for residences, and commercial new construction, where windows will be placed strategically based on maximizing sunlight and natural light coming into the facility. Imagine though as the sun sets the windows continue to produce light. Windows in fact can become the primary light source in the future utilizing organic LED technology. These substrates can be made to be completely transparent or semi-transparent or completely opaque. So we have flat, we have flexible, we have transparent. This really to me is one of the most exciting things in the lighting industry horizon right now. So because we'll be forced to rethink the way that we do lighting, so many new approaches will come. OLEDs will not only transform, but will actually reinvent the way that we think of and, and the way that we use lighting. The nature of OLED and its characteristics will compel particularly the architects and designers to rethink their approach to their design work. The integration of lighting into ceilings and walls combined with building controls will be the ultimate in energy efficiency and frankly it can be quite beautiful if done well. The opportunities of combining OLED technology with regular LED technology for general lighting and for focus lighting as a combination really opens things up to the unimaginable. All this sounds nice but when are we going to be able to do all these things? This is just a speculation, it's somewhat of a roadmap. This is a consortium 
bunch of different peoples and different organizations best estimate of where things are going put on with our own personal spin and beliefs and we'll take you through it. where we were frankly speaking in about 2005 2009 was just this as a concept and not much off the R&D research and development laboratory benches but by 2010 or so, there were actually specialty niche products. And again, this is all concerning general lighting. As we know, there are lots of applications for small displays and flat screen televisions, smartphones, and the like. But this graph is to stress where we think and hope to be with OLED technology in the general lighting arena. Today already, we have some specialty lamps where transparent and flexible are an integral part of what the application requires. And... OLED is probably the most energy efficient light source for those specialty niche applications. We're now just now seeing a broad array of high-end architectural fixtures into the marketplace. Cost is a little bit prohibitive for uh, everyday general lighting, but it's always a first step with new lighting technologies and light sources. Where we are today is probably somewhere between high-end architectural and a commodity. A uh, commodity we foresee coming in the next two to three years, maybe four years, where commercially available substrates and uh, sheets of organic light-emitting diode materials will be commercially available for manufacturers such as MaxLight to retrofit and to build into everyday general lighting luminaires and fixtures. So another year or two, folks, before we're out there pushing OLED products as a primary light source. And a snapshot of where we are today, a reminder first that incandescent at best is about 20 lumens per watt. CFLs on average at about 65 lumens per watt. LEDs, folks, if you don't believe this, you're not paying attention, but LEDs are at about 100 lumens per watt. MaxLight's got some products that are over 110 lumens per watt. And uh, LED is only going forward. So where... CFL, certainly incandescent, and to a large extent HID and linear fluorescent, these numbers are about where they're ever going to be. LED continues to grow. HID at about 80 lumens per watt, and that is at initial lumens. As we all know, it has a very steep lumen depreciation. And linear fluorescent, about the most efficient light source until LED, is at about 100 lumens per watt. Organic light emitting diodes today is 40 to 45 lumens per watt. I've read some articles where it's at 50 and even 60 lumens per watt, but these materials are not commercially available today, so we're not including them. But today commercially, we could actually pull out and purchase and apply 40 to 45 lumen per watt substrates. We have a question here from Las Vegas. Thank you, Jane. Jane, plasma lighting is actually something else. Plasma lighting is different type of lighting that is primarily a backlighting source, and that is closer to fluorescent than to LED. Plasma in television has been very successful, and frankly speaking, is still your best choice over LED or LCD when you're looking at the refresh rate, which is four, 600 plus megahertz for a plasma versus LED and LCD, but it's not as small and slim. But it is a completely different technology. I don't think you'll be seeing a lot of plasma lighting in general lighting application. We have a question here from Isaac. Hello, Isaac. Thanks for your question. Uh, asking about utility companies and if they're willing to invest in uh, promoting this technology. So far, no. Unfortunately, Isaac, we haven't found many utilities who have even yet to have a separate program or a separate incentive for LED technology over CFL technology. Today, the ESCOs out there, they're very price-driven. It's a competitive industry. They're not going to pay a more for LED or OLED unless there's more incentives, and for the most part, there are not more incentives for these products. So we are looking for the utilities to separate LED from fluorescent. There are chief advantages that the utilities gain, such as uh, much longer life so they can count on the saved energy for longer periods, maintenance, so on and so forth. So we are hoping that at least the more progressive utilities will put out special incentives and rebates just for LED and OLED technology. We're hoping in the very near future. We have a question here from Richard. Richard's asking, if there are organic materials, won't there be more price effective one day. Absolutely, Richard. And the prices have already come down tenfold 
from just 2009, 2008 periods from the original substrates that were available for illumination, and that's just in a handful of years. So the prices will continue to come down. Certainly the smartphone and other technologies are really pouring dollars into research and development into this technology. And just like LED, all of that will spill over to us in the general lighting industry. MaxLight's right on top of it. When it makes sense for you, we'll have the products for you. We have a question here that's labeled private, so you all are not able to see it. We won't say where it's from or who it's from, but someone is mentioning that they're currently having a problem with Energy Star and LED-related products. Look, I can't speak directly to that problem, but you can send me an email on the side. I'll be happy to put you in touch with our Energy Star experts inside, and I've got a contact or two of my own. My email, gmurphy at maxlight.com, and I would be happy to talk to you offline on that subject. Feel free to get in touch with me anytime. Email is my favorite form of communication. Now, before I go on to thanking those who contributed towards this webinar today, I I wanted to do a little plug for the MaxLight University staff here at MaxLight. Not only do they maintain one of the vastest, largest databases of terms and definitions, including illustrations for the general lighting industry, but we have a massive library of past webinars. And I would like to point out one particular webinar that was conducted in September 2012 on two distinctly separate but important issues in one webinar, first being SP ratio or scotopic photopic ratio, and the second being delivered lumens versus total lumens. These are two very important and timely subjects. As this LED technology advances, the second half of delivered lumens versus total lumens is becoming more and more important that we all understand this so that we can explain how a single light bulb with 20,000 lumen count can actually have less delivered lumens than an LED fixture that has 6,600 lumens. This webinar will help you understand that. And then of course, scotopic versus photopic. It's very, very important in the name of energy efficiency and, and healthy vision. And it happens to be our most viewed webinar of all time. It's been downloaded more times than several of our other webinars combined. So if you haven't had a chance to see it, go to maxlight.com slash webinar, scroll down to September and take a look at it on your leisure. Any feedback about that, let us know. The feedback thus far is that it has been tremendous Tremendously helpful, particularly to distributors who have to answer these questions on a day-to-day -day basis. The lumen maintenance. We're being asked from Oregon. Tim, great question. Lumen maintenance on OLEDs is a little bit up in the air and has a lot to do with the actual materials, but when it's done right and done consistently, we're looking at similar lumen depreciation rates of LED. In other words, 50,000 L70 is probably going to be very, very conservative. And the early numbers say that it might be better than LED. That's a little subjective because actually LED is getting better every day when it comes to lumen maintenance as well. But we'll keep you in touch with the latest on that and in the near future we'll share with you who we think the leaders of this technology will be in the future. Remember they're all my potential suppliers so I treat them equally. A quick thank you to all of those who submitted materials for us to use in today's webinars. It is a deep subject. We actually are winding this down at about 25-30 minutes but we whittled this down from hundreds and hundreds of pages and we didn't want to put you to sleep. So we hope that we pulled the best of it, what we think you need to know, and most importantly, where we are against general lighting. And I think as a conclusion, it's early for general lighting. I think that's my take away from all of this is that it's a little early for general lighting other than some high-end architectural fixtures. But as the efficacy grows and the cost comes down, we see absolutely a place for this in general lighting and maybe in an unprecedented way in that we actually change the way we light up our lives. Thanks again for joining us. We know your time is valuable. We hope that we contribute to that time into your education. Feel free to visit MaxLight University at your leisure. It's free and open to the public. We will leave the session open for a few more minutes for any questions that you might have. If we can't get to them live, we'll get back to you within 24 to 48 hours via email. Thank you so much, folks, for joining. Talk to you again next month. Bye-bye.